Let's talk about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. That's right. No more excuses. Get your lazy ass off the couch. Go start a podcast. There's the creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Once again, no more excuses. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Could it be easier? Even better, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. That's right. They're paying us for this ad. Thank you very much, Anchor. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started now. This is The Dime, a 10-minute dive into the cannabis and hemp industry through trends, insights, predictions, and tangents. Good morning, everyone. This is the week of May 21st. As always, I've got my right-hand man, Kellen Finney, here. This week, we're talking about why should cannabis be legal everywhere? With cannabis already legal for medical use in 33 states, legal for medical and adult use in 11 states, and more members of Congress, even those who previously opposed legislation, now supporting cannabis policy, state legislation agendas are moving quickly. Kellen, why do you believe marijuana should be legal everywhere? Money, strictly. I think it's an economic stimulus right now. It's a new industry. It's going to generate tax revenue for the government who just fronted $2 trillion. It's also going to generate jobs for economies that are struggling to get back and going from the coronavirus. And I think that at the end of the day, it's a money situation, right? Like the drug war was started because of money, that all the U.S. all the US cash was leaving the country and getting stored in random countries outside of the U.S. And in order to get the money back, we started the drug war. And so I think at the end of the day, it is literally about money. You could make a good point, I think, about providing regulated cannabis to the masses. It's safer. I mean, people are already consuming cannabis nationwide, whether it's legal or not. There's a thriving black market that is very, very clear that it, it, it exists. And I think it would help California. There's a lot of other kind of angles you could take. But at, at the end of the day, I think it really, really just kind of boils down to money. I mean, I think it's a no-brainer. And as Charlie Sheen says, I think it would be hashtag winning. Back to you, Brian. What do you think? Um, you like my Charlie uh, Sheen reference? Yes. That's off <laughs> Charlie Sheen. It's been a while, that. right? Well, I appreciate the Charlie Sheen reference. Caught me a little off guard, for going to be honest. But at the end of the day, I, I think <laughs> it's spot on, right? I, I think people and politicians, it all comes back to money. And I think when politicians stand up in front of their their people and they, they try to exude confidence that this economic economic time is going to change and that people will get back on their feet and move forward and people will find jobs. They're going to need to communicate a new, a new way of life. And it all is going to come back to tax revenue and how they're going to generate jobs and opportunities. And it's going to have to be through creative thinking and it's staring everyone in the face. And the more you hear about it, the more it's picking up steam that, that people are screaming, Hey, we got to throw the old playbook out the window because we're in new times. 40 million people are unemployed. The government is just cashing out checks to everyone for stimulus. At the end of the day, it's going to need to recoup that money in taxes. And the greatest way they can do that is to tax the shit out of cannabis and give people something to talk about and a positive thought that this is the new era and we're going to go forward and figure out how to get people back on their feet. Next question. Give an argument that opposes marijuana that many may not realize. I can't. I like, I thought about this a long time. And like the challenging side of that question is opposes marijuana that many don't think of. I, I mean, it's tough for me because I've, I've been in the space, right? Of course, we've been in the space for a while. And so I think we've probably heard every different angle associated with the opposition, just as part of being in the space. One thing that I did kind of come to that I guess is maybe not as public as it, it could be is that it is an intoxicant and just with any intoxicant there's going to be individuals who abuse it at the end of the day it, it does pose a risk for addiction and abuse just like any other drug people get addicted to, to sugar i mean i watched some what, what was it there was some random show i watched where this girl was addicted to eating chalk so like people can get addicted to anything. And at the end of the day, it is a vice and an intoxicant that causes people to be inebriated. It does affect the way that you think and it, it does affect your grip on reality. 
And because of those things, it, it poses a, a risk to a certain percentage of the population that's that genetically is exposed to those kind of things. I mean, there's people, it's, it's well documented that if you have a record of schizophrenia, that you shouldn't consume cannabis. And so a lot of people may not know that, hey, that runs in their family and yeah, cannabis becomes legal and then they go out and they're trying to have a good time with their friends. And next thing you know, they consume it and it triggers schizophrenia with them. That could be really, really terrible. But I mean, that's just such a small percentage of the population that it's just, I just don't think that it has a lot of, a lot of legs to stand on in terms of a posing argument for cannabis. I mean, I don't know. What do you think, Brian? This is, this is a hard question. I struggled with it also. I think a lot of it's the unknowns, but I think with anything that's about to be completely overhauled, there's unknowns, but I, I would lean back on the research aspect and understand that a lot of what we think we understand, we don't. I think Ken Snoke of Emerald Scientific said it perfectly. We know nothing. And until we know something, many people will have opinions, but there won't be scientifically fact-based arguments. And until we get that scientific evidence, it'll continue to be opinions and unknowns. And I think it's going to take some time, which will be the biggest hurdle, in my opinion, to move forward. But I'm excited for the challenges and to, to see the research that comes out. And, and I'm confident that the results will speak for itself and that people will see that there are massive amounts more benefits than there are cons. So here's my favorite time, prediction time. What is the biggest hurdle that once it's overcome, cannabis will be federally legal? Banking. At the end of the day, banking, because the people that are dictating the legislation federally, they all are stationed and spend the majority of their time in Washington. Yes, Washington, D.C. does have an adult use market, but at the end of the day, it, it's really hard for any individual to see, to track the money, to see what's going on because it is a cash business and there isn't institutional backing in the space. If the Safe Banking Act goes through, I think that's the first big step. And then I think the, the clock starts, I would say two years max after the Safe Banking Act passes that it becomes federally legal. Once the Safe Banking Act passes, you're going to be able to generate a paper trail. And then the people sitting in Congress and in DC that are responsible for kind of passing or vetoing the bills, they're going to be given raw data that shows the where the money's going and how much money is actually being generated from this industry. And when they see that, it's going to be a no-brainer. At the end of the day, it all boils back down to money, and they're going to be like, wow, we're missing out federally on a ton of money. Like, we should probably do this, you know? And it's all about um, getting reelected, and there could certain items in there about reelection in terms of generating more tax revenue and all these things for politicians. And I think it's going to turn into literally a soapbox for a lot of these politicians to stand on to try to get reelected in terms of generating more revenue. Couldn't agree more. I think that soapbox will get louder and louder and there'll be more and more momentum for it. I continue to believe that New York's going to go wreck this year and I continue, I know it's optimistic, but it, it just makes too much sense and I get it. A lot of times we don't operate in what makes sense. We operate in silly, silly thought process and red tape and older thinking, but I believe it's going to happen this year and federally I'm fingers crossed it's going to be next year. The more and more you hear about how distressed some of these businesses are, the restaurant industry, people are flooding out of New York City as fast as humanly possible. At the end of the day, they're going to have to figure out something else to, to reinvigorate the economy, specifically here in New York. And, and I continue to believe that, that's what's, that that's the only option that they really can pull except for raising taxes, which I think is going to happen, which is going to infuriate people. In regard to the biggest hurdle that once it overcomes, I think it's safety. I think when people operate a motor vehicle and they're high, there's a high likelihood they're not as good as they normally are. And they're going to have to figure out from a regulation standpoint, what can you consume from a THC standpoint to intoxicate you in order to operate a motor vehicle? And once they understand how that works and then how they can apply that from an insurance perspective and from a more medical regulation standpoint, I think once they get that done, the money will follow. So thanks for everyone for joining. This is The Dime.